Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up and welcome to this, one of the final videos for this year, our 10 best games of 2020. For this video, both Mark and myself have picked our 5 favourite games each that released on the Switch in the year of 2020. They don't have to be the games we gave our best scores to when reviewing, it's much more subjective than that. These are the games that have stuck with us and we have enjoyed and returned to the most as the year has progressed. Now as you can imagine, picking just 5 games each out of the huge amount that released over this year has been very difficult and for that reason you are seeing some of our honourable mentions playing in the background as I speak. But which 10 games have made our ultimate list? Well, let's find out. Cheers Glenn. Alright then, so working from my number 5 down to my number 1 choice, in number 5 I have Xenoblade Chronicles The Definitive Edition, which I'd never played, I actually played the second one before this one, because of the Nintendo Switch, and I actually enjoyed this a bit more than the second one in all honesty. I think that came down to the characters, you play a Shulk who has his awesome sword the Monado, which almost acts as another character in the tale. It's quite a traditional storyline, I won't spoil it, but for me an RPG always comes down to A having good combat mechanics and B having those interesting characters that you connect with and this does both really well. The third aspect is always the world and the worlds in these games are absolutely beautiful and in fact I think the visual improvements they brought to this version ended up making it look a bit crisper than its sequel which came first. I mean that may have been patched up now and I potentially need to go back and finish it but I really enjoyed this one on the Nintendo Switch. My fifth place game, which released on the Switch in February of this year, is Two Point Hospital. This is a spiritual successor in some respects to Theme Hospital and had some of the same creative team behind it. This is a business construction simulation game where you are charged with building a number of different hospitals, having to build a number of different rooms to tackle a number of ailments, hiring and firing staff as you go, and all the while trying to keep the patients happy. I'm a huge fan of such simulation games to begin with and Theme Hospital, more so Theme Park to be fair, are some of my favourites of the genre. When I heard about Two Point Hospital a few years ago, I was so intrigued to see whether they'd managed to capture the feel of that original game and waited with bated breath to see if a Switch version would come. It finally came this year and I'm delighted to say that it definitely captures that spirit. With a number of different missions to complete, a huge amount of comical diseases to try and fight, and a patch that has come since launch that has now added a sandbox mode, this game definitely presents value for money for anyone interested in the genre. Next up for me was the wonderful A Short Hike, which came as a complete surprise off the back of one of their indie directs. It's a completely stripped back, relaxing adventure game where you have to ascend a mountain, but there are lots of different challenges for you to do once you've actually completed the game. It has buttery smooth 60 FPS performance, you can jump and glide around at your leisure, and there are loads of different interesting characters to meet as you go around. It had a feeling for me of old school adventure titles, things like Little Big Adventure, which made that exploration really enjoyable, and then the music as well was excellent. I did enjoy that visual style, it almost has a low poly look, but they've managed to cram in a lot of details. It's one of those games I think where many people looked at it and they'd kind of decided it wasn't for them, and then I believe we reviewed it and the amount of people in the comments that were like, okay, I've picked it up on this recommendation and I absolutely love it. And that was certainly my experience of it. A really enjoyable and certainly short game, but it's one of my highlights of the year. My full favourite game of the year releasing in April was Trials of Mana. Now I will say that I deliberated between this game and Xenoblade Chronicles as to which one would get the spot on my list. And as much as I love Xenoblade Chronicles, I have played it twice before on the Wii and on the 3DS and completed it in the past. So having this new experience of Trials in 2020 meant it gained its spot. Not only that, 
but I'm a big fan of the Mana series, Secret of Mana in particular on the Super Nintendo, and the fact that this is of course a remake of a Super Famicom game, Seiken Densetsu 3, which was never localised, meant that I was very excited when I heard this remake was coming. Ironically enough, we did of course get the collection of Mana on the Switch just before this game came out, which did have a localised version of Seiken Densetsu 3 on it, but nonetheless, I was delighted to play this remade version. Mark and I actually went down to Square Enix's offices in London before the game released to play an hour long demo of the game and I did play a little bit of it at EGX Res, a gaming event in London, a while back further than that and both of these just aided my excitement for the game's release. It's not perfect by any means, there is a bit too much hand holding to begin with and some of the character voices are a bit annoying but all of that really for me pales into insignificance when you compare it to the positives. It was nice to be able to play an ARPG that felt grand in scope but could still be finished in about 20-25 hours, meaning that I could actually get to the end of a game for once. Victory is easy with reliable companions. My third choice then goes to Immortals Phoenix Rising, which was written off by many as simply a Zelda Breath of the Wild clone, and yes, they do copy loads of aspects from that game, but actually it manages to stand on its own two feet. It's so nice to see Ubisoft moving away from the Assassin's Creed franchise and taking a few risks, but let's be honest, they know how to craft a really well-designed game with lots to see and do. I enjoyed the combat, I thought that was a really nice system, quite simplistic and again quite similar to the Assassin's Creed, the latest games, but having the timing and countering mechanics, as well as the melee options available to the player, just added a little bit more depth that I thoroughly enjoyed. You could fully customise a character which I liked, although potentially a little bit more customization would have been nice. One thing I really didn't like, and it almost made it miss this list, was the inclusion of a skins shop. I know you could say that you completely you could ignore that, but why aren't those skins just discoverable in the world? I'm, I'm just not a fan in a single player game of that aspect. Now that being said, the way they'd seamlessly implemented the Greek mythology into every aspect of the game, and I love the game and it's since seen another patch 1.03 which brings it right up. A real surprise hit this year. Into the top 3 now and my third favourite game of 2020 is Animal Crossing New Horizons. This game came out in March although I didn't actually pick it up until about 3 months ago and I've probably sunk more time into this one than any other game since then. Whilst I did dabble in previous Animal Crossing games it wasn't until New Leaf on the 3DS that the game really got its hooks into me. I still can't really explain why which is the strange thing about this series, there's just something about the tranquil setting and the general nature of the tasks you undertake that make it incredibly relaxing. You can put as much into the game as you want and by the same token get as much out. Some days I just walk around doing nothing in particular, digging up fossils is a particular favourite pastime of mine, whereas at other times I will try and move things forward by completing tasks that will mean the island grows, but either way it doesn't really matter. It's just a lovely way to unwind. My number two game might come as a bit of a surprise, but it's Hades. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was incredible. Supergiant games have excelled themselves, really. Bastion and Transistor are both excellent games, although there is another before that that wasn't on Switch that was also brilliant. But in terms of Nintendo Switch, this is their crowning glory. I think the real success here is how they managed to make a roguelite feel like a continuous story. So as you play through each run, Zagreus learns more about his environment himself, but also the other gods in the kingdom. The underworld looks incredible, there's no two ways about it, this is certainly Supergiant's classic style, but it's a refinement in every way. The combat is so slick, there's loads of different weapons to choose from, you can unlock more, and I think lots of roguelite haters got on board with this one and found themselves falling in love. I'm happy to put it as my number two for the year. My second favourite game for 2020 on the Switch was Pikmin 3 Deluxe, which released on the Switch in October. 
Now yes, this is a port of a game on the Wii U. It is the game I bought a Wii U specifically for, I might add. I'm that much of a fan of Pikmin, and my love of the series goes back all the way to the first game on the GameCube. Back then, strangely enough, in the same way I bought the Wii U for Pikmin 3, I bought the GameCube specifically for the Resident Evil remake. Time passed though and I wanted a new game, so I went down to PC World and it was out of this and another game called Doshin the Giant. I chose this one on a whim and never looked back. Now this is the point where someone tells me that Doshin the Giant is super rare these days and is worth a bunch of money, but even so, I still thought I made the right choice. Pikmin 3 and the Pikmin series in general are real-time strategy games where you take charge of an astronaut or set of astronauts who have crashed on a planet and they find that the only way to get about the planet or to find the things they need to leave is by using and commanding the titular Pikmin creatures. It's a wonderful game, I love this series so much and this Switch port includes new features such as the ability to play in co-op within the story mode as well as including the extra content released as DLC for the Wii U version as standard. It was going to take something very special to push this game down into second place and lo and behold 2020 included that too. Number one then, and this it was really a reflection of my personal tastes and my personal preferences in games, and it's Ori and the Will of the Wisps. I absolutely loved it. Now, I'm a huge fan of Metroidvania games, with my favourite being, obviously, Hollow Knight, and I've been waiting a long time for Silk Song to turn up, as I'm sure many of us have, but I didn't really expect them to be able to pour over Ori and the Will of the Wisps and for it to look and perform like this, to be honest. It's one of those impossible ports. Now, you might look at it and think, oh, there's not much going on there but there's loads there's several layers of 3d depth you've got the different lighting effects hitting the different surfaces there's a lot of reflections and it's all running at silky smooth frame rates now don't get me wrong there are a couple of times when there are minor dips but this is a real marvel to have on a handheld console and not only that it's just a lovely game the different cutscenes with that beautiful studio ghibli style and the story itself it's a timeless classic story really but moon studios wow this is yeah it's my number one game so far for 2020 20. And my first place game, my favourite game on the Switch in 2020, it wasn't even close, it's Streets of Rage 4. This game came out on the Switch back in April and I had the pleasure of reviewing it. I also did a retrospective on the series. The links to both of those videos and any other videos relevant to the games in this list will be in the top in comment. Now I am a huge fan of the beat em up genre. It's probably on balance my favorite genre going, especially these days where the pick up and play nature of them suits my lifestyle perfectly. The Streets of Rage series in particular are right up there with some of the best the genre has to offer, Streets of Rage 2 being a particular highlight for myself and many others, but I don't think I'm sensationalising when I say that for me Streets of Rage 4 is even better than that game. Whilst I agree it might not have the grace or finesse of a game like Hades, you won't sink as many hours into it as you would a game like Xenoblade, and it's not as impressive a technical achievement as something like Doom Eternal, but for me there's just something so incredibly satisfying about its brutal flow in regards to combat that means I just cannot stop playing. I absolutely love the hand drawn art style and the music, whilst not quite as good as 2, is most definitely up there with some of the best that the series has to offer. It took a long time for the fourth part in this fantastic series to arrive, but when it finally did, man it was worth the wait. Cheers for that Glenn, it's so interesting to see how different our choices are but I think they really complement each other and that's kind of why this channel works. Thanks to you Glenn for this year, it has been awesome making this channel with you and I think we've had a real fun time making it. Someone commented about, oh make sure you don't burn out and I said well because it's two of us, we always manage to kind of pick up the pace when the other one's feeling a bit rough and whatnot. So yeah, nice one. Thanks to Glenn and thanks to everyone who watches this channel. If you enjoy it, then please do consider subscribing. And to our patrons, you are awesome. We really do thank you for every one of you. And we hope you all have a brilliant 2021.
Let us know down in the comments what your top games would be for the year. I think the only one that got away from me in number 6 would have been Doom Eternal. Absolutely love that game. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys. See ya!